Trust and Chill Trust. I've been fundraising for about 20 years now, um, and this is my really quick guide to trust and grants um, and quick wins. And um, I just want to say a really big thanks to Diane Gill at Seashell Trust, who um, put most of this information together, so thanks to her. Um, I hope you found it useful. All my contact details are on the final slide, so feel free to get in touch. If you've got any questions or want to talk anything through, um, it's always great to connect with other um, organisations in the community um, in Stockport. So I'd be really, really happy to do that. So please do get in touch. Find me across social media as well. So um, as uh, Wendy Gray. So please do. Um, do that and we can share some ideas and hopefully have some mutually beneficial conversations. Um, okay, so here we go with trusts and grants and quick, quick wins. Okay, so quick win number one um, is have a look at the NCBO website if you haven't already. There's heaps and heaps of stuff on there across all areas of income generation, all areas charity governance there's quite a lot of free stuff on there as well which is really really useful definitely sign up for the updates um especially the local ones that will give you details of grants and trust funds that are uh, opening up um in your area um they have loads of information about things available there's quite a lot of free courses on there which is really good and that's across all aspects of fundraising not just tr trust and grants um, memberships free for charities that are under 30 grand of income annually but um it's a tiered system so to be honest um it's fairly affordable as you go up um so hopefully that would be great for everybody um there's loads of stuff about trust fundraising on there things from how to write an application, write the way through to having really impactful reports um, to send back to your funders as well. So it's definitely worth a look. Uh, quick win number two, funding sources. So always the critical uh, question asked, where can we find funding? How do we know what's out there? Um, a lot of this you have to pay for, which isn't great, um, but there is one which is Charity Excellence Framework, and that's free, and you can search on the criteria on there, so things like location and some of your um, criteria relating to your charity as well, which is good, so it'll fill funds that will um, be relevant to you. There's quite a lot of hints and tips on there, again, sign up to their newsletter for sure, um, and there are, on top of that, lots of other sources of fundraising, but unfortunately they all are um, chargeable. Um, the best ones are Funding Central and Grants Online, if you do have any budget for that. Quick win number three, follow and research similar organisations so you'll know who is doing a similar job to you, whether that be locally or nationally. Definitely follow them on their social media and sign up for their newsletters and um, they'll be posting about donations they've received and um, they'll certainly list them in their annual report and accounts if they um, are producing them and making them public and um, so you'll be able to see what types of uh, funds um, they're going to and being successful with which will really help because you'll know that you'll hit their criteria if they're similar to you um, it's also really good for looking at what level of donation financially they're given and to what kind of project just to help you uh, make your applications a bit more focused and relevant um, and I definitely recommend setting up a Google alert which again is free um, on some of those organisations as well that you're watching because um, it will pick up all the press releases they're sending out about any funding they've received too. Um, quick read number four, have a look at the Charity Commission website. It is not the easiest to look at and work through um, and it takes a bit of getting used to, but once you do, there's a lot of really good information on there. There's a search function on there which will help you locate some funds, um, but like I say, it just takes a bit of patience and you probably need to leave a bit of time when you go on there. Quick win number five, watch the funders. So have a look at what the funders are doing. Um, in their annual report and account, they'll list who they've donated to and how much. So similarly to watching your um, competitors and other organisations, definitely have a look who they're fund funding, help you uh, focus 
because your applications decide whether to make an application or not. Um, many are on social media, mostly on Twitter, so they don't tend to go across all the platforms, but often they'll be on Twitter. Um, following the third sector social media account is really useful as well. They often will alert you to funds that are opening up, up um, often before they do open, often before the date that they open. So I would try third sector, I'd try charity funds, I'd try fundraising magazine and UK fundraising. But I'd also um, try putting into the search, search on some hashtags. So trust grants funds fundraising and you'll start to if you follow some of those hashtags as well and um, it will really give you quite a lot of information about what's going on in the market at the moment and quickly number six keep it focused so again really big question when you put an application together what should you put in there so um, as a quick checklist, definitely, obviously, who you are, what you do, as succinctly as possible. Who your beneficiaries are, as much info as you can. Obviously, your location, geographical focus, um, what your project is. Um, so uh, sometimes you might not have a specific project and you're just going for core funding. I would always try and package that up. So have some really good key messages in there that talk about the type of work you're going to do. If you haven't got anything specific to fundraise for, um, definitely make it look like it's quite specific. That could be number of hours, it could be number of projects, it could be number of beneficiaries, whatever that might be, but just try and get some figures in there. Obviously, how much you're asking for, and if you've got a financial, financial quote from a supplier, all the better if it's for a piece of equipment or for a service that they're delivering for you. Um, Outcomes and the difference it will make really important and any stats you've got to back that up. Um, a case study is always really useful, even if you can't use names and photographs. Um, so with our case studies, we change names. They're real case studies, but we change the names and we leave photographs out if we don't have consent or we're struggling on consent. Um, a timeline is great because it gives them an idea of when they might get some feedback. And really importantly, definitely include some information of how you're going to evaluate your project and what they've funded, how you're going to show them what um, what difference it, it has, make sure that you've really thought that through. If it's going to be qualitative, make sure you tell them how you're going to measure it, um, how you're going to show from anecdotal feedback um, the impact it's had, and if it's going to be quantitative, what data you're going to be able to get from it and what they'll receive back. Um, always useful to show if you've already had fun funding towards a project. We do it in a table with the name of the funders and the amount that it's received, but you can do it how you want. It just shows them that the project definitely has legs, that other people are really believing in it, and often it kind of just gives them the reassurance that other funders have uh, done their due diligence around you and that that they can be confident in funding, funding you. Uh, and finally, try and keep it short. They're receiving so many. Um, some of them obviously have uh, specific questionnaires and application forms that you've got to fill in. But if you're doing speculative, um, we do quite a lot of speculative to trust and grants as well. Um, we always keep it to two pages um, and that includes photographs as well. So you've got to try and include those as thumbnails if you're going to put photographs in there and a cover letter is really important just to pull out your main points um, and that's it good luck so there's my contact details definitely get in touch if you want to and if you've got any questions and i hope that's been useful thank you